freaking in trouble. All right, so let's see. Corporate strategy, that's what we want to, to talk about today. Let's see what the question is. Uh, for this one, please uh, uh, write some notes in the background. I don't think I'll be providing you guys with, uh, with notes for this one because uh, it, it, it's specific to whatever you are supposed to be doing yourself, like the company that you've picked up. So it's not really necessary for me to give you any notes but I'll give as much guidance as I can possibly because you already have the format from the answer that he has, from what he has highlighted in the, in the question. <clears throat> okay, so our corporate strategy assignment eight says that identify an existing organization in an industry of your choice. The organization can either, can be either a profit or a non-profit organization. It is vital that you select an organization that you are familiar with, where information can be made available to you or where you have access to what? To information. If it is necessary, you may use a fictitious name for the organization. However, do, however, do or do not that, uh, whatever information you use for your project, or for your assignment purposes only will not be shared with third parties. It's just highlighting that if you want to share some information about your company, feel free to share it. Uh, we won't be publishing the assignment or something like that. Uh, using the chosen organization as the basis for your project, attempt the following questions. Attempt the following uh, questions. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, you need to put an executive summary. Oh, that's all. Uh, can you not hear me, guys? I can hear you, James. Okay. Uh, Mash? Is there audio on? No, your, your, your audio is not on my. I think she needs to correct her audio. The audio is not on. Okay, just give me a second. Let me send a text. Okay, I think she's having some audio challenges. We'll just give a minute maybe to try to fix that. Uh, okay. 
strategic management processes. May recording this. Being recorded. All right, it's fine. I think we can go ahead while she tries to sort that out. All right, so I was highlighting that you've already been provided the format in which to present your, in which to present your answers. So what I'm going to do is for today, we are going to basically talk about uh, part one and part three of the assignment. And then I'll let you guys go throughout the week, do your research and et cetera. And then next week on Friday, we'll talk about the, the, the remaining parts, the part uh, four and part five of the assignment. We'll do that next week, Friday, since you're going to be submitting this, uh, I think in what, in two weeks, on the 14th or something like that. So we'll do the second part next week on Friday. But for today, I just want us to focus on the uh, on the first part of the first part of the assignment, which is your uh, question uh, one, two, and three, right? So first part, uh, you can see it doesn't really have any marks where it says executive summary. There are actually no marks there. Uh, essentially, what you're supposed to do uh, with the executive summary is you are going to write it at the end after you have. Uh, completed your assignment. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically summarize what your assignment is all about. So it's just basically a summary or an abstract of what your assignment is all about, providing the necessary information for someone to just have a brief background of what the assignment is all about without reading it. So you can see it didn't even highlight how many marks it's going to give. If you don't provide it, you deduct marks but even if you provide it, it won't really be that many marks, maybe it's just two marks or something like that, that you allocate towards that. Then the first part of your assignment is uh, provide a brief background of your uh, company. Right, let me do it this way. Let me just uh, open a strategic management assignment that I've done before. A strategic, corporate strategy. Uh, what's this one? It's SAA. SAA. Uh, corporate strategy. SSSAA. Okay, just give me a second. Just try to open an assignment that I've done before so that I can show you what exactly is looking for in certain areas of the, of the assignment. Am I the one who did this one? Okay, oh, this was not me, just someone else. Corporate strategy, KP.
Yeah, but it's fine. I think we can use it. Let's just and if you like to see people share. Just bear with me for a second, sorry. I just think it, it could be better for you to just show you something instead of just talking about it. I think I found it, it's opening. Yeah, this one, exactly what I want. So let me share it. So I once did an assignment for uh, South African Airways. That was the organization that I chose for this assignment. So you notice the first section where it says provide a brief background about the company. That's the first section, right? Provide a brief background about the about the company. So this was my what? This was my uh, my assignment over here. Uh, strategic management. Uh, okay, so you can see it's almost similar, but there are, there are differences, right? You can see this one uh, starts with uh, executive summary, just like you've been asked, and then goes to the background. And then after the background, it goes to the strategic management process. And then after that, it goes to evaluating and etc. Your assignment takes a different direction after that one. But this one, it had a uh, strategy evaluation and etc. Right. But the first few parts are the same. So you are going to what you are going to present in a, an executive summary, right, of what your your assignment is all about. So you can see from here, I was highlighting what the executive summary is in this paper. The researcher first provides a brief background of the company, highlights the key trends, key achievements of the company, then analyzes the strategic management process and etc. Reviews and etc. So you can see you are just providing a brief a summary of what the assignment is all about. So that's your executive summary. You can see it was what, all about half a page long. So that's what you need to do for your executive summary. But you write the summary after you have completed the what, after you have completed the, the assignment. And then I usually prefer putting an introduction rather than just going straight to the point. So you can see I put in an introduction where I, I highlighted, uh, the purpose of the assignment, just like we usually do. The purpose of this assignment, you can see the statement here. The purpose of this research is to identify a business and critically evaluate the four aspects of the business and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Just based on what the questions the lecturer has provided us. So that's what I did. And then in that introduction, I also highlighted the various sections of the what? of the report, i.e. the first chapter, which is the introduction, the second chapter, which is the profile of the organization, the third chapter, which is the management uh, practices, the fourth chapter for you to be different now, because you are now trying to match the question that what that he has given you. Yes, Mash, you've got a question, go on. I am trying. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend that I use a private company instead of a, a, a government um, department? It's easier usually to use uh, a, a company, whether it's a public or a private company, than to use a, a, a department. Although it is practical, you can use a department. Remember, you said for profit or non-profit. You can use either one of them, but usually it's easier to use a company. Why? Because uh, when you're dealing with a company, the incentive, the profit incentive, makes it easier to discuss issues of competitive advantage, makes it much, much easier to discuss issues of pricing, issues of 
advertising, issues of competitive advantage, and et cetera, it makes it easier for you to discuss those things. Whereas when you're looking at a non-profit organization, it can be tricky sometimes to try to discuss some of those aspects because they may not be applicable. So I would recommend the use of a, a private company or a public company rather than a department. Okay, thank you. So the next question, okay, let's do it this way so that uh, we don't lose track of what we're doing. Let me put it side by side. I just put the word so that you can at least see what, 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 how to structure it yourselves so that I don't lose you in just talking and then you are not understanding what I'm trying to say. All right, there we go. So the next session says provide a brief background of the selected organization. This should include information such as company description, parent of the company or subsidiary information, branches, locations, operational highlights, number of employees, goals, accomplishments, and et cetera, that you can what? That you can include, All right? So you can see over here uh, where, where I am. So over here, I was talking about what? I was talking about a South African Airways. That was what? That was my company's choice. So over here, I provided a profile. That's a description of the what? Of the company where I highlighted when it was formed, where I highlighted the current revenues of the what? Of, 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 of the company, how many people it employs. I think I put how many aircraft it has over here, how many the areas it works in over here, the, the regional areas and et cetera. And then I even gave a little bit background, uh, industry background, though so this was not necessary, but I did give a bit of a, a background to the what? To the industry and the current trends in the industry. Although that part, you can skip that part, it was not really that necessary. Right? But you can even give more, more information in terms of, if it's SAA, for example, the current uh, holdings company, the subsidiaries, uh, there is Mango, there is this type of airline, all of them are under SAA line. It's currently under, uh, is it currently operational or is it under uh, some sort of, uh, uh, what do you call it? I don't know why today my mind is drawing a blank on currently. But anyway, you are just providing a brief background about the company, where it's located, its various operational activities, its current number of employees, its current profitability, its current accomplishments that it has made, you can even put a, a what you call this, uh, the organizational chart for the company. Uh, you can see over here, it uh, gives a bit of background in terms of the CEOs of the company. Uh, this, this section over here, uh, SSA, key achievements to date, right? The achievements that they have what? That they have made over the what? Over the past uh, few years, right? So that's what I what? That's what I, I was talking about here under the what? under the brief background. So this is what, this is SAA, right? You can choose a different company. For example, let's say you choose and pick and pay. Again, it's the same process that you have what, that you, you are basically going to what, to go through again, where you're just highlighting, uh, when was pick and pay formed? How many branches does pick and pay? Is it 2,000, is it 1,600? Where are those branches located? How many thousands of employees does pick and pay have? What is their current revenues? Yeah, to date, right? What are their current key achievements? Are they the most well-known brand in South Africa or in etc.? If they are won some customer uh, satisfaction awards or something like that, they are just basically highlighting information about the company that will help be give a context of the work of the company. But remember, this is just five marks, so you. That's why I was saying some of the information that I was providing over here was really unnecessary. I was just trying to, you know, hide it, but it was really unnecessary, but it's just five marks. So at the end of the day, something like maximum, I would say maximum of three pages, maximum of three pages, but otherwise I would recommend one page background information and or one and a half pages about the what, about the company where you're just talking about what the company is and et cetera, it's different background, but don't exceed three pages. Three pages is actually a bit too much information that we have provided about the, about the company. So then you go into the second section, which is what we want to focus on today, which says here, analyze the general strategic management process used by those selected organizations, considering 
best practice is suggested by literature. What suggestion can you make? Now, there are two aspects of this question, right? The first aspect is the practical aspect where you have to actually tell us what is the current strategic management process of the organization that you're talking about, right? That's why they said choose an organization that you want, that you know about or you can obtain information about. Then the second part of the question is where it's saying now, considering best practice is suggested by literature. You basically say, considering what we have taught you in the what in the strategy in the corporate strategy module. Now compare what is happening in the company and what we have taught you and make recommendations and make suggestions what for the specific for the specific company that you're what that you're talking about. So there are different approaches that you can take. The first approach is whereby you can start with the best practice and then go to the company. Or the second approach, you can start with the company, then go to the same practice. But you are you have to have a third section where you are now recommending and providing what your own thoughts or your own suggestions on how to what to improve the company's strategic management process. So for me, you can see over here what I did is I started with the what with the best practice, i.e., the normal strategic management process that we expect an organization to undertake, right? So you can see over here, I'm sure you, if, if you've read your, your study module, I'm sure you've already seen that. When you're doing your, your strategic management process, there are basically about four uh, aspects, right? That you're what, that you are, that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are looking at, right? The four aspects are, is the first part is your, your what you call your, your, your analysis, right? Your, your, your strategic intent, the input to the strategic management process. We are saying that you first look at setting up your what your vision, mission, and your objectives as an organization. Then once you have set up your vision, mission, and objectives, then you assess your what your environment, right? You analyze your environment, whether it is your internal environment or it is your external environment. You assess your environment to see that given the environment, are we able to achieve our what? Our what our mission are we able to achieve our vision as an organization? Now, based on the uh, assessment of that environment, the next stage now is the strategy formulation. You know, saying we have assessed the environment and we have seen that we cannot achieve our mission, or there are certain hurdles that are there in achieving our mission. Now, we want to formulate or we want to generate what want to generate the strategies that will help us achieve this mission, given the environment that we are operating under is in is an organization. So usually on strategy formulation, you start by uh, uh, providing the objective, the long-term objective that you want to attain for you to get your mission. And then after you have your long-term objective, you generate the what you generate the what the different strategies that you can apply before choosing the ones that you want that you want to that you want to use for the organization. Then you go to the fourth aspect, which is your implementation. Now you have what you have uh, identified your vision and mission. You've assessed the environment thoroughly, and you have uh, formulated your objectives and your strategies that you're going to use. Now you need to implement those strategies. Now in strategy implementation, you are going to look at the goals of the organization, the short-term goals of the organization. What are our short-term goals? And what is the management process that we are going to undertake for us to achieve those short-term goals? And what resources or how are we going to allocate the various resources that we have to achieve those what? Those are short-term goals. So that's your what? That's your strategic uh, implementation. Then once you have uh, done your strategic implementation, you go to the last stage now, which is your strategic outcomes. We are now saying that, have you achieved strategic advantage or have you achieved competitive advantage from the process that you've undertaken? If the answer is yes, then you repeat the process. If the answer is no, which means that you need to evaluate again the environment. You need to evaluate again the strategies that you've done to provide feedback to the process so that you can correct, 
right? So that we can adjust the strategies, right? So that they can what? They can be more profitable than they were in the what in the beginning. So that's basically a standard strategic management process. Now, if you do your research online, you see that there are different diagrams. This is not the specific one that you should use. You can use a completely different one. You can use the one in your study module. You can use another one that you get online in various textbooks. There are various different diagrams that you can watch that you can use. Just that I usually prefer this one because of the way it's what it's structured. It makes it easier for, for, for me to explain certain points. But there are other diagrams that you can watch that you can use. For example, let's just check the one, let's see in your study module, the one that your lecturer uses in your study module. Give me a second. So I was looking and I actually can't find it. I'm looking through unit mm -hmm. five. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Okay, let's see. Just give me a second. Let's see. Uh, strategies. Yeah, this one. This one is the one that your lecturer uh, uses. It's on page, what page number is this? Page 17, unit one. So you can see this one is with what? Eight steps. So you start with what? Identification of the mission, vision, and objectives. And then after that, you do what? You do your analysis of the what? Of the environment. You analyze the external environment, which is the top part over here. You analyze the internal environment, which is the bottom part over here. So if you check in my diagram, all of this is part of what? Of the first stage. But here you can see he already has what? five different things that you've included in the what in the key processes, right? And then after that, you formulate your strategies, then you implement your strategies, and then you evaluate your strategies. So you can see what the difference between my diagram and this diagram. So you can see my need, these three were already there, and all of this was stage number one, right? But he separated it into, into different stages. So it's really, like I say, it's not the standard diagram. If you, even if you search, in a uh, strategic management textbook, you will notice there will be different versions of the whole process in each and every textbook. It just depends with the, uh, with the lecturer or writer, author, the teacher, what they uh, basically prefer. But you will notice that at the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's just how you put it together. But at the end of the day, it's the same thing. You start with your mission. And after the mission, you analyze. And after you analyze, you formulate. And after you formulate, you implement, and after you implement, you evaluate, right? So those are the five things that you need to do regardless of how you present them, okay? So that is the what, that is the best practice process. Don't worry, we'll discuss each of those items individually, but that is the best practice process that is expected when you're doing what? When you're doing a strategic management. Now, like I said, you now need to go into your specific organization, right? And present the information for your specific organization, what is happening in your specific organization and how different is it to the what? To the best practice process. So now let's look at how I did it in this specific assignment that I did myself. Okay. So remember what I said, this assignment is not the one that you guys were doing. This is a completely different assignment. So some of the aspects might not really apply, but the first part, this part that we're talking about, it was the same assignment. Okay. So here I go. I then presented my next subheading, SAA's strategic management process, right? And then I want to highlight the management of uh, SSA highlighted that the study management process of the company is shaped after the what South African Act and it's basically it's a public company. So they, they, they formulate their strategies are based on the what? On the, on the, on the law, on the law that is propagated. So I then, if, if you go, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I just want to see exactly what I wrote. Okay. All right. All right, so you can see in this company, they are saying that, remember, I just want you to take note of something. Remember we said you start with the mission. That's what we said, right? You start with them, 
with your mission. But in this company, they've highlighted this statement over here. The management highlighted that there was room to change in the mission. However, because SAA is a what is an SOE, they don't necessarily determine their own mission, right? They are provided a mission from law, right? From the statute, that's where they get their mission from. And then the management, they have a little room to wiggle around in terms of the wording of the mission, but basically it is provided from the law. Now, when you now go to best practice, right? You now ask yourself, who is supposed to form the mission of the organization? Now, if you check something over here, let's go to my uh, last table, uh, evaluation of uh, strategy, evaluation of the best practice. You can see over here, I've included my first topic, evaluating the strategic intent of SAA. Right? I'm saying I want to evaluate the mission and the vision of what? Of SAA. And then I now highlight what? What did I highlight? I say that SSA's vision was derived from shareholders and legislation. And management were not intensively involved in the selection of the organization's vision and mission they may lack a sense of ownership of the strategic direction the company is pursuing. So um, uh, what I want you to see is how I'm now analyzing. So I'm saying that first of all, we've provided that in best practice, you should have a mission and a vision, right? Then second of all, we've, I've provided that looking at SAA, there is actually a vision and a mission, but it is not determined by management. Then third, under my third heading, under evaluation, I then critique now and say that although the mission and vision is there, right, it is not provided by management, therefore management lacks ownership of that mission and vision. And because they lack ownership of it, they might not be what? They might not be in control of the strategic direction of the company which is the weakness per se for what for the company. Now you might be in a completely different scenario. So let me give you a completely different scenario. So let's say you have your own organization that you've picked up. Let's say the organization's name is um, uh, Salala Enterprise. That's the organization's name. So you are going to say what? Your, what is the what? The best practice is you're supposed to have what? Your mission and vision. That's the best practice, right? And then you go to Salala, and you say, Salala, maybe it's an SME. Maybe the organization that you are yeah, assessing is an SME. And they don't have any mission or vision that is written down, right? They don't have anything that is strategically written down and et cetera. So you can now highlight that for Salala, they don't have a consistently written down mission or vision for the what? For the organization, right? And then now under your evaluation, you now evaluate the impact of that. What do various authors say about organizations that don't have a mission or a vision? Now you are now quoting different authors now. You're now saying the authors or the various researchers have highlighted that it, the lack of an organ, the lack of a mission or the lack of a vision in an organization results in an organization lacking strategic direction, results in an organization lacking coherence in terms of a unifying factor for all the employees in the company to look into, results in an organization not knowing what it is trying to achieve or lacking the goals or the energy to achieve particular goals. So I, I hope it's, it's clear what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say. So that's basically what you're going to do. So again, let's pick another example. Maybe they have a mission or a vision, but again, from your notes, uh, I don't know if, if it's in your notes. Let's, let's check if it's in your notes, uh, or I might have to give it myself. Uh, just, just hold on. Let's, let's move, let's check your notes. Let's check if it's in your notes. Uh, okay, where is the, okay. All uh, right, let's see. Is this in your notes? I hope it is. Yeah, it's in your notes, right? Strategic intent, mission, vision, and value statement of an organization, right? Okay, let's see. All right, you can see over here, it highlights the, the reason why you need a vision. So if the company is lacking a vision, 
then you can come over this section and highlight that it will not have these things. These things, they will be disadvantaged because of a lack of what? Of these things. But there's something else that I just wanted to, for you to see. Yeah, you can see over here. These are the questions that a mission statement answers. It answers the question of what business are we in? What purpose do we serve? What customers are we targeting? What are we doing? Why does the organization exist? Who are we? What will we do, and etc. So you can see it provides an identity for the organization that the management can understand, that the employees can understand, that the shareholders can understand, that the customers can understand, that the various stakeholders of the organization can understand. So therefore, if you lack this thing, you are going to lack an identity as an organization. Now, that lack of an identity can be a disadvantage in terms of maybe your customers, product positioning. Your clients are not sure, are you a company that values uh, and the environment or you don't value the environment? Are you a company that values customer rights or you don't value customer rights? Are you a company that values uh, uh, product safety or you don't value product safety, right? So it provides you an identity which can be useful for you as what is an organization, right? So again, they, uh, let's see if there's something else that I can pick up. There's something that I wanted, but I'm trying to see if it's in there. Okay, you can also see over here, summary of benefits of clear strategic direction, which is provided by the vision, which is provided by the mission. Right, you can see it guides human behavior and defines working relationships, which means that if you don't have a mission, a vision, and values, which means that it's difficult for you to, what, to guide the human behavior and to define the working relationship. It's difficult for you to have a benchmark for resource allocation. It is difficult for you to inspire employees throughout the organization. So that vision, that mission inspires the employees to work in a what in a particular manner. So again, that's a what that's a weakness. Then I, yeah, the what, what I was looking for, I don't think it's in here, but if you do uh, a search online, I'm sure you'll be able to get it, what I wanted to talk about. But what, what mainly I wanted to also talk about is that there are ways in which a mission or a vision is created, right? They are particular what is expected, what is a good mission, what is a good vision statement, right? So Jan, I'm now saying now, let's say that the organization that you have picked, remember we did two extremes. The first one, we said that they are not the ones who are creating the vision, they are given by the government. And then the second one, we said that they don't have a, a vision. But most of the time, you are going to get an organization that already has a vision and a mission. Now you need to assess, is it a good vision or is it a what? Is it a good uh, mission uh, mission uh, statement that you are what? Uh, that, you are, that, that, you are, that you are looking at? So there are various things that you can assess to see if it is a good mission or a good vision statement. And then you can now comment that according to this specific author, because their mission statement does not provide the values of the company, it is not a good mission statement. It needs to improve. It needs to incorporate within itself what is the value of the company. Because it does not show what the uh, focus, the product focus of the company is, it is not a good mission statement. It needs to provide the focus of the company, what the product of the company is, right? Or because it is a short term in nature, maybe it's a vision which says, uh, we want to, to be the best company this year. Maybe that is their vision. Right? And they're saying, no, 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 but the authors, the strategic management authors highlight that a good vision should be looking into the future, should be what should be long-term in nature. Their current vision is a short-term vision. It does not look into the future, into what they want to become as a company. Therefore, it is a weak vision. They can improve it by doing A, B, C, E, and T. All right. Are we together there on what I've just explained? Because that's basically what you're going to do for the rest of the of, of, of the stuff. We, we are going to go through it, but that's basically what you're going to do. So I hope we're understanding each other there. Um, James, can I just clarify something? Yes. So the, this uh, area of, uh, you know, we go in and we can look for theory online or research online. Mm 
-hmm. and added, should that come into part A where we're talking about best practice and theories? Yeah, okay. Or the, must come in this area where we are doing the critique? It is more important when you're doing the critique. On the best practice and theory, right? On the best practice and theory, number one, provide a diagram. You can see in my assignment, I actually just provided the diagram yes. and it did not do anything yes. else, right? You can see I just provided the diagram and did not do anything else. So the first thing is provide a diagram. Then in addition to the diagram, you can provide some brief notes. You are allowed to provide some brief notes. So where you're saying okay. that uh, mission and vision and whatnot, right? And you say that, that is stage number one. This is what happens in that stage number one. And then you go uh, environmental analysis. That is stage number two. This is what happens at stage number two. And then uh, next one, strategy formulation. That's stage number three. This is what happens at stage number three. You can quote some authors there and et cetera. But don't get too excited in that section because remember, you, your project is not about providing theory. Your project is about yes. applying the theory that you have what? That you have learned, right? So the best practice part, keep it as brief as possible. Just show that you know what strategic management process is because you just want to present what the process is. Then the okay. current organization part, you, you can present it differently. If you want, you can actually just do it the whole as one part, but I think it might end up, it might be difficult to do it that way. But then the second part, then briefly highlight what the organization currently does. Don't go too much into it, just briefly highlight. Do they have a, a mission and a vision, right? Highlight, if they don't have a mission and a vision, then you just highlight they don't have a mission and a vision. And then you go to the next stage, do they do that, do they do that, do they do that, do they do that, right? And then at the end of the day, you know if you what? You know if you're two parts, right? Then your third mm -hmm. part is where your marks are. Where you're now comparing the best practice and what is happening in the organization. Then using the relevant literature from your test books, from your modules, and from what you have researched online to see if they are doing it well or not. So I think the best practice says that you have to have a mission statement. The organization does have a mission statement. However, their mission statement is weak why? Because under the best practice, the mission statement should include these 10 items as listed by author, et cetera, and et cetera. But I have checked and only see that I can tick off only three items, right? Because of this, I think, right, the organization will lack strategic direction. I think the organization will not have good working relationships. I think the employees will not be inspired. This is supported by author ABC. Is that okay. clear? And then when we, when we talk about the company and their mission and vision, do we have to quote the mission and vision? Yes, yes. If they have okay. a mission and vision, quote it, provide it. They say this okay. is their mission mm -hmm. and vision, right? For example, under strategic formulation, or at where we're going to, we, it's just that I, I wanted to show you guys the real process rather than just going through the notes. But we are going to go through the whole process. You see what I'm talking about. So we have done the vision and mission, right? Let's go to the next one. Okay. Let's go to the next one. All right. Uh, where is it? All right. So you are seeing here evaluating strategic intent, right? Sometimes I get way ahead of myself. I like diagrams a lot. I think they explain a lot of things that people. Oh, yeah, there it is. You see there? That's SAA is what sufficient over there, right? So I've highlighted here, SSA's vision is to be Africa's leading world-class airline. And in the period 2005 to 2014, they've managed to achieve that. However, once the CEO started serving shorter terms since 2010, for whatever reason, the company has since lost the title to Ethiopian Airways. So they are no longer the Africa's leading what? airlines. The researcher concludes is highlighted by the what? Uh, where is it? 
as highlighted by literature provided that this is a consequence of short-term CEO. There's a book that I read that it highlighted that if you are constantly changing your CEOs, it affects the vision of the organization. So that's what I'm basically highlighting, that I've looked at SAA and I've seen that they are constantly changing their CEOs and that is what is affecting their what? Their vision as, a, as an organization, right? Then I highlight it. This is supported through literature that highlights definitions of leadership being aligning and motivating staff towards the company's vision, which means that the CEO should be aligning and motivating the staff towards the vision. Therefore, if the, if, uh, if, if the CEOs are only short-term CEOs, they do not marry with the long-term vision of the organization. Therefore, it is the what it is the failure in terms of what in terms of the what the strategic intent of the what of the company. I was just doing my what my analysis, but it could be a completely different analysis that you do depending on the organization that you've what that you've chosen. What I would also do after we 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 have gone through, I will open another one for for pick and pay, so that you can just see the slight differences that can happen when you are what when you are assessing different companies. All right. So let's go to the next one, right? So that's what, that's the first one. Then the second part over here, you see, um, so this is what, this is part A, right? So I'm, I'm back again. Remember, I said with three sections. With section one, best practice, which shows us the actual process that should happen. Part two, strategic management process at the company that we've chosen. And then part three, the evaluation. So I'm here on part two. I'm going through at the company. Reports from the parliamentary uh, blah, 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 uh, monitoring uh, group also highlight that the strategic management of uh, interaction between SSA, CEOs, government, and et cetera, and the board. The process for former CEO involved, this is what I want, the process by the former CEO involved a two-day strategic meeting with the board and the government. That, that is what they did for, for strategic management as part of their process. They had a two-day strategic meeting with the government met with the what with the CEOs to what to uh, create strategies for the what uh, for the for the organization, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. There's something that I wanted. Okay, you can see the statement over here. A management also highlighted that strategic formulation, evaluation, and options was shaped by the what was shaped by the government. That's something that I also wanted to tell you. But if you read through what I've written over here, you will notice something is lacking, right? Remember, our process says what? Our process says we start with the what? With the formulation. And then after the formulation, we do the analysis. But you can see from what we are talking about here, there is no analysis that is being done at what at SSA. They are not assessing the environment, the, whether it is the internal environment or it's the external environment. They are doing strategic meetings and et cetera, but no one is sitting down to assess the environment. No one in the management said that the uh, strategic management process starts with a two week evaluation process where the management will submit their thoughts about the future and the current environment that SSA is operating into. Therefore, that becomes a weakness that I can talk about under what? Under my, my assessment over here, right? Now I can now what? I can now highlight, look. Uh, for example, let's see uh, what did I talk about. Aha. You can see here this statement that I've included here. Well, now I say, is highlighted in the discussion with management, the discussion that I did with the management of SSA, right? And data published from whatever. The strategic management process at SSA did not thoroughly evaluate the organization's environment. So that's a weakness that I've what that I've identified. Now I want you to see a pattern over here. I am critiquing this organization because it has a lot of weaknesses. But the organization that you have picked might not have these weaknesses. These might be strengths. They might tell you that we actually do the strategic management process. We actually do the environmental analysis. Therefore, you have to commend them for doing that. You have to highlight the uh, management does an evaluation. This is how they do it, right? If it is a correct process, then you say this, the way they do it is supported by authors and et cetera, and et cetera, who highlight that for you to do analysis, you need to use pastel. And you, as you can see from the discussion that I have done, or from the integrated report that I have read about that company, they actually use Pestel to what to assess the environment. Yes, uh, you have got a question. Go on. 
So what happens if the company's integrated report or their board reports, which they actually don't really, um, you know, make public because they're not JSE listed companies, except just with closed environments. Mm -hmm. What happens if they don't make this information publicly available? How do we reference it? How, how do we provide that? Do we just say from our research and knowledge or of the company? Okay, there, there, are, there are two aspects of this. The first aspect, right, is that number one, remember what the lecturer said, use a company which you are aware of. That's the first aspect. Use a company which are, that's the reason why you are saying use a company that you are aware of, so that you can have access to this information, although it might not be publicly available. That's what, that's number one. Then number two, even if, uh, if you are using a public limited company, like a pick and pay and et cetera, right? If you look through that report, there are sections in there that relate to their strategic management process. The wording of those sections might not be what you want. Or let me do it this way. Let me try to open pick and pay right now. Uh, pick, uh, pick and pay, pick and pay KV. Okay. Let me open pick and pay and show you something. The wording of the of that they use might not be what you want to find out, but it will relate to the same thing. They might not use the word pastel, but they will tell you that they do an environmental analysis. Right. So let's open, uh, where is it? Uh, pick and pay. Okay. Let's open pick and pay. This pick and pay, yeah, this is pick and pay. Uh, let's see. All right. So again, you are, you are seeing what I was talking about. The executive summary, introduction, a company background, then the next one was what? Strategic management process. So I think this was again, almost a similar assignment. Uh, this is my executive summary, only one page. Uh, my introduction over here and then our background of pick and pay, uh, talked about the leadership, and then the strategic management of what? Of, our, of, 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 of pick and pay, right? So in this question over here, I have provided you the strategic management process that pick and pay does, right? I did not start with the what? With the best practice picture like I did in the other way. The reason, one of the reasons why I did not do that is after looking at their, uh, in their process, I, I saw that they almost used the same thing. So look at this, you see, this, I got this from their report, by the way, from their integrated report. But it's, you will not find the exact diagram, but if you read through the integrated report, you'll be able to identify this. So what they do at pick and pay, they formulate vision, values, and a pledge. You see this word pledge, you will not find it in a strategic management textbook, but I found it in their what? In their integrated report. That is where the uniqueness comes. Then after they do that, they do what they call identification of material issues, risks, threats, and opportunities. What does that make you think about? The environmental analysis process. But you see, it's not worded like that in their, in their integrated report. They say it's identification of material issues, risk, threats, and opportunities. That's what they say in their report. That's what we do in our strategic management process. But under best practice, we call it a what? An environmental analysis. We're assessing the external environment and the internal environment. So what you're going to do at the end of the day is you're going to now compare their process, the identification to the what? To the environmental analysis and see, does it match up? If it matches up, then you commend them. Of it. If it doesn't, if there are certain weaknesses, then you recommend they may need to add this and this and this and this to their what? To their, to that particular stage. And then you go to the next stage, they do what they call a strategic focus, i.e. objectives for uh, SBUs. That's what they do. So again, if you go back to our, our process, if you look at the one that I gave you, the one that was mine, you will notice that under strategy formulation, I had long-term objectives, then strategy formulation. So this is what long-term objectives are represented by. You might not find it in other test books, but in some test books, you will notice that they'll say long-term objectives, then strategy formulation. So that's what they do. And after they do that, they have this thing here, strategy and KPM communication and workshops. You will not find this in any textbook, 
right? But this is part of their what? Of their strategic management process. Most textbooks, they move from formulation to implementation. But pick and pay, they do formulation, they do workshops, and then they do implementation, right? And then lastly, strategy, evaluation, and adjustment. This you will find in most textbooks, right? But you can now see what I'm trying to talk about. Now, this is pick and pay. This is their process. You will get it in the integrated report. It may not be the exact wording that you want, but you actually get that whole process from the what? From the integrated report, right? Now, in terms of my assessment, you can now see what my assessment was. So first thing, formulation of vision, mission, and long-term objectives. Let's see what I said here. I've highlighted here, pick and paste mission, vision. This is their vision. I've copied it over here, right? And then read my, my statement over here, right? The mission statement of the organization provides its staff and management with the scope and purpose of the company by providing a unique identity that embodies the philosophy and character of the organization. Pick and paste vision and mission statement manages to fit into the confines of literature and provide both a what? A purpose and a philosophy, right? Because that is important when doing what a mission. So you can see, I'm saying that it's a good mission. I can't recommend anything else. So I'm just going to highlight that according to the literature, it is okay. Then I move to the next stage, right? So our next stage here, values and pledges, right? If you check this one, uh, let's, let's look at what I said. Uh, I've quoted an author here. Uh, Morgan argues that an organization needs to set up its long-term objectives after setting up the what? The vision and the mission, right? And then uh, let's see. Pick and pay strategic management process uses organizational values and pledges instead, which means that they have exchanged. There's something that is recommended in literature, but they are doing something that is slightly, that is slightly different, right? And then my comment over here is seen from the above, the chosen term pledge, it, it reflects the attributes of an objective that guides the companies to create profit. So I'm now saying that although they are calling it a pledge, from my assessment, this is actually the objective that Modern was talking about. They are not calling it an objective, they're calling it a pledge, but it's the same thing from my what? From my assessment. So again, it's an A okay for me. Then let's look at the next stage, which is environmental analysis, right? So you can see this diagram. This is what I copied exactly from their what? From their, what do you call it? from their integrated report. This is the picture in the integrated report, right? So they are saying that to determine materiality of business is taken into account. This is what they do. They assess the what? The macro environment. They assess the changing industry and consumer trends. They assess the expectations and concerns of stakeholders. And from that, they get the material issues. So this is what they do for environmental analysis, right? Now, I want to compare this to, uh, to Pestel. Right. Remember, Pesteo says you have to do what political is, is that been done? It's done under macro environment. It is to do economic, social, technological, and etc. Is that been done? It's done under what macro environment? Again, under environmental analysis, we say we should do a task environment. Task environment is the industry environment where we are going to do Porter, where we are going to do the key industry strength and etc. Like we did in our first assignment. Has this been done? Check the statement here, industry trends, changing industry and consumer trends. So yes, it has been done. Then expectations and concerns of stakeholders. Now, this is a weakness. I don't think this refers to what to internal environment analysis. So I can now argue that I don't think they have done justice to the internal environment analysis. This is what they need to do. They need to use Vario, they need to use SWOT, they need to use all the different things that I know about internal environment analysis. Okay, is that much clearer now? For me, yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so let, let's go to the next one. So we've done a formulation, so we've done a mission and vision. We've done analysis. Now we can check at formulation. Uh, let's go. Let's go to SAA. We can switch between the documents. It's fine, so that we can see different perspectives. Uh, let's go to SAA. 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Evaluating strategy formulation at SAA, right? So again, if you go back to our second stage, right? It says here, management also highlighted the strategic formulation, evaluation options and implementations was shaped by the government, right? And then the CEO like Riani have also quit SOE, stating that there was too much bureaucracy in the strategic management process, right? Basically what he's saying is that the government is too involved in the strategy formulation for SAA. They are detecting the strategy. It was at SAA, they are coming up and say, use this strategy, use this strategy, use this strategy, which can be a what? Which can be a weakness. Now, let's look at what my evaluation said over here. So this is my evaluation. Strategy formulation is heavily influenced by what? By politics at what? At SAA. That's, that's a comment that, I what? that I'm making. Remember, strategy formulation should be influenced by the environment. It should be a reaction of the environment. What is the environment that we've assessed? What solutions can we come up with to gain competitive advantage in the environment? So you can now highlight, you can see here, literature suggests that man, when management are choosing the strategy to follow the strategic management process, such strategies should be guided by the environment and resource ability, not politics. You see, now I'm what, I'm, I'm highlighting that particular weakness of the word of the of the organization and then i'm also highlighting here considering their financial challenges saa might have pursued a low cost strategy that's a strategy that i would recommend what for them right however you can see that that's not what they were pursuing if you read the rest of the statement you can see that's not what they were pursuing why because their strategies were being detected by the what by the government all right, let's look at a different perspective. Let's look at uh, a pick and pay and see what was happening at what and pick and pay so that you can see how you can argue it from a, from a different perspective. Okay, let me open pick and pay. All right, let's see. What I'll also do for you guys, I think I will also send you these two documents for you to just look at them, maybe to also help you open up your mind and et cetera. But be careful when using this, when looking at this document. Like I said, it's not the same question that you guys are doing. There were different questions, but there are many similar aspects in terms of what you're trying to, what you're trying to look at. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was talking about SWOT analysis. There was two under the analysis, uh, competitive analysis, two under the analysis, objectives. All right, strategy formulation, that's what we want, right? So this is what I'm highlighting. Once the objectives are set and they've been scanned, uh, the top management in pick and pay are responsible for the strategy formulation. I got this from their report, that it is the top management who is responsible for strategy formulation. These strategic sessions are done by strategic committee sessions done on an annual basis. From their integrated report, they actually state that every year, the top management will meet to formulate the strategy of the what of the company. Below is highlighted the main strategy formulated by pick and pay, right? So this is the strategy that pick and pay is using as I got from their what from their integrated report, right? And then I'm now um, I'm now, now highlighting from theory, I'm now criticizing. The above strategy is a mirror of several strategies recommended in various strategic management texts, which means that they are what? They are matching, right? Then I analyze further. For example, pick and pay. Okay. Uh, for example, pick and pay highlights that they do, they do, yeah, they do not do niche marketing, rather they market to a wide range of clients. And also they do not include in the above state, also not included in the above statement, but also available on their website. They highlight that the middle to upper income class is their target market. And then I go on and talk about a lot of different things over here. But I'm sure you can see, my main issue over here is I'm saying that the way they formulated their strategy is matching what is recommended in what in literature. 
It is in response to the environment. It is strategies that match what other strategies that are available in literature. I even quote various authors who have talked about the same strategies that they are what that they are that they are doing as 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 as, as, as pick and pay. Right. So that's what I did under what under strategy formulation. Then we go to the next to uh, to the next one, which is strategy implementation. All right, for this one, there was a slight difference. Remember what I said that they had an extra stage, which other come which which was not in literature. This one, this extra stage that pick and pay had, which was not in in literature. They are key uh, strategy and key performance measure workshop and etc. Right, which we did not find on any of the other stuff. Right. So after strategy formulation. Top, uh, top management carries out large scale workshops with uh, et cetera to communicate the expectations, the strategies, and the key performance in tactical planning. This is supported by this guy in literature who highlights the existence of three levels of strategy and et cetera. All right, I was trying to talk about something different, but you can see here, I'm not even talking about the strategic management process itself because it's not part of the strategy management process. But nevertheless, it is supported by some literature in terms of it can be important, it can add value to the what to the organization. Right. So that's what I was what that was that's what I was what I was highlighting. And then I go to the what to the strategic implementation. Now under strategic implementation, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is what literature says. Uh, successful strategic implementation should focus on what? On resources, infrastructure, budgeting, and et cetera. This is what the literature is saying over here. Then uh, literature also says that successful strategic implementation Okay, here yeah, again, you should focus on what? On resource allocation, leadership, reward system, culture, and structure. So that's what literature says. Let's look at pick and pay. Pick and pay's focus, therefore, is catered for these factors directly and indirectly. But you see the statement here. But is what? But is left out resource allocation. Because after assessing their integrated report, I did not see any way they talked about resource allocation. So I thought that was a weakness that they what that they have in their strategic management process. They are laying out the part of what of resource allocation. So this again answers what you were talking about, where I think that some information might not be publicly available. I'm going to critique it. If it's not there, I'm going to say I don't know about it because I've not seen it. So I'm going to I'm going to critique it in, in my own perspective. Uh, Rash, you have a question? James, the resource allocation, like what resource allocation would you like to see? Okay, in terms of resource allocation, what we are saying now is when we are looking at uh, at strategy implementation. All right, let me talk about the process of strategy implementation. When you're looking at strategy implementation, you are saying that as an organization, you have highlighted what is the strategy that you want to what to implement. But you don't just go on and tell the employees that this is the strategy and end there. You have to highlight the resources that have been implemented towards that strategy. So we are saying that for the next year, we want to achieve 30% in sales, right? To achieve the 30% in sales, this is what we are going to do. We are going to allocate a 50,000 budget towards the marketing guys, right? We are going to give you 50,000, and that is going to go towards vehicles which you are going to be using in your what? In your marketing processes, right? That's part of resource allocation. Number two, for us to achieve that 30% increase in sales, we are going to recruit 5% more employees in the marketing department. That's under, again, a uh, resource allocation, right? And then uh, you go ahead, you look at uh, uh, IT resources. What IT resources have you allocated towards the achievement of that particular uh, vision or mission or goal that you have? So that's what we're talking about under resource allocation. Is that clear?
Is that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So that's resource allocation. So when you're doing strategic implementation, there are various drivers that drive strategic implementation. If you read your, I think your notes or just the basic strategic management textbook, they will tell you that for you to succeed in strategic implementation, you need to make sure that resources are allocated properly. You need to ensure that you have the correct leadership, trained leadership, leadership that is motivated. You need to ensure that there is a reward system for the, what, for the company. Reward system, we were saying that the employees are properly motivated to achieve. If they achieve the goal, are they being rewarded for achieving that particular goal. You need to make sure that there is the correct organizational culture. If not, change organizational culture, influence your organizational culture towards the particular goals that you have. You need to ensure that you've got the correct organizational structure. For example, if you want to improve your, 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 your marketing, your reputation as an organization, then you have to, you have to move from a top-down organization to a bottom-up organization. So those are some of the various aspects that you are now discussing. Does this exist at what at pick and pay? Does this exist at SAA? Does this exist at the whatever company that you want that you've chosen? Because that's what is recommended in literature for strategic implementation. But from your assessment of their strategic management process, are they talking about resource allocation? Are they talking about improving their reward system? Are they talking about uh, changing their organizational culture? If they are not, then that's a weakness that you can what? That you can critique about their process. Then lastly, you move to the last stage, which is the strategy evaluation. Again, you check what does a best practice say about strategy evaluation? What does the company do in terms of their strategy evaluation process? Is it adequate? Does it match the what? The best practice that what that the, 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 the literature is uh, recommending. If it does not match the best practice, then you critique it. If best practice says that for strategy evaluation, let's use the balance, uh, what is it called? The balance scorecard for strategy evaluation. Is the company using the balance scorecard? What system are they using for strategy evaluation? Are they monitoring? Do they have a uh, uh, key, what do you call this? Uh, key indicators. Do they have key indicators in the organization? So if you check, for example, if you go in the integrated report, you will notice that they have certain key indicators, certain ratios that they are looking at, that the CEO or the chairman will highlight that our, our, our margin increased in the past year. That's a key indicator. So do they have that? If they don't have them, that's a weakness because they are not evaluating the successes of their strategies of, or the failures of the strategies that they are implementing as an organization. So I think for today, this is uh, where I'm gonna uh, end. Let me just show you something so that we are all on the same page. Uh, but if you're free, if you've got questions, please please feel free to ask them before we, we close. Uh, where is this thing? Uh, okay, so this is where we ended today. Uh, on the on three, analyze the strategic management process used in your selected organization, considering the best practice is suggested by literature. So next week, we are going to do uh, the implementation and the last one, the analyze the, whether it's a winning strategy or it's a mediocre strategy. This is strategy evaluation. It's actually part of the, the assignment that I was showing you, the other two assignments, strategy evaluation, whether it's a successful strategy that you're implementing or it is not a successful strategy. So that's what we are going to do next week on Friday. But for today, we've ended it here. I don't know, do you have any questions on what we discussed? No, thank you. Right. James, for 40 marks, uh, there's so much to write. Sorry? For 40 marks, it's so much to write. Yeah, yeah, it's so much to write. But, but remember, this one, this is different from your other assignments. Do you see that statement that I'm highlighting there? Actually, yeah, all right. So it's 30 pages. Yes, it's different. The other assignment, it's 5,000 words usually. It's around 20 pages. This one, it's actually, they request you to do 30 pages. And then at the beginning of uh, the um, lecture, you mentioned, you know, you said chapter one, chapter two. So must we do chapters or must we just do headings? No, no, just do headings. Don't, don't worry about that. It's just that sometimes when I give work to my tutors, they get excited. 
was <laughs> they will be trying to make sure that it's unique, it's different from other people trying to avoid plagiarism, sure. etc. So I uh, know don't use chapters, don't use chapters, but use proper headings. Number your your, sure. your headings properly. Yeah. Okay. Please don't forget to share with us the two examples you use because that's going to give us good guidance. Yeah, Thank I'll, you I'll, I'll definitely do that. I'll definitely do that. But please also, when I give you these ones, don't uh, copy and paste. Don't do that. I, I yeah, definitely not. I mean, that's wrong for us as well. Don't do that. Yeah, I, I'm not afraid because this, this, these are from last year. I used them last year. It's not like I'm going to use them this year. But please don't copy and paste because it will create a problem for you if you do that. No, definitely. Anyway, Thank you guys for, for coming in. Uh, we we'll meet again uh, next week on Friday to finish off the, the assignment. And then once we are done, we start our revision class. So I, I, I also wanted, I will discuss with you, I think we'll discuss next week in terms of how are we going to do our revision class, whether we're going to do two lectures per week or one lecture per week, it will depend on what you guys agree with so that we can cover all the subjects, okay? Because we don't have much time, we only have one month to do our, our revision. Okay. And the revision classes are going to be for the three subjects. Um, no, they're they mainly going to be for two, for research and uh, what do you call it? And, uh, finance. And, and, and finance. For this one, remember, I only charged 800. I have removed the, the cost for, for, for revision. Because I think it's, it's, it's I, corporate strategy is a tedious subject. That's the honest truth. If you have questions, if you have questions for me, even during the other lectures, you are free to ask them, I'll answer them. But I don't want to, to yeah, it's, it's a tedious subject. It's, it's a, it has a lot of information. And uh, yeah, it's better to just read it. Just, just read it only once per time. It's actually an enjoyable subject, especially if you're already working at a management level, because it's very applicable to what you guys are applying in the, in the, in the work environment. But you can see from what we're just, just trying to do an assignment, the number of different things that you have to do. It's a very tedious subject. I really don't want to go through revision for it. That's why I removed it from my charges. But if you have good questions, I don't mind. You can ask the questions. I just didn't want to go through there because it will just it will be a lot of work if we have to do things. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Understood. Thank All you right. very much, James. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, good night, Marshi. Bye. Bye, Rich.